Hello and welcome to the April 15th episode of Beacon Web News. I'm Sim Kerr. With being home, professors not only have to teach their own students, but many now have to make sure their own children are getting their schoolwork done. Reporter May Craig spoke with a few professors on what it's like having their kids participate in school from home. This week on Beacon Web News, I interviewed MCLA's faculty parents, history professor Anthony Daly, and English professor Amber Engelson on how they're homeschooling their kids during the coronavirus. Uh, they're 5, 8, 10, and 13 there. So since we're both home, we can kind of um, take turns in terms of who's trying to, uh, to organize the remote learning. And then the school has been you know, sending... Um, especially online, just kind of sending assignments and work for them to do uh, each day. So we usually, you know, start out in the morning with, uh, you know, kind of a plan for each person, or each uh, what they're going to be working on, and then kind of work through that over the, the course of the day. Uh, you know, it's slowed down, like, you know, some of the grading, some of the things that I would normally be doing for my classes, uh, because I just don't have the same amount of, of time. Um, and also, you know, teaching remotely at MCLA means I'm doing some things for that part of the job, which I wouldn't be doing otherwise in terms of trying to you know, pull together new materials and put things online. So trying to balance um, my work um, with the, the teaching of the kids uh, and also just being around, right, and kind of trying to be a, a reassuring presence in a time of you know, crisis and uh, anxiety so um, yeah it just means there's a lot of uh, uh, a lot of time management and trying to squeeze things in and uh, taking turns with my wife and how to uh, who can be on uh, uh, who can be on duty for for teaching you know different they're working on different projects and we're stopping for lunch and breaks and things like that but we just start around 9 or 9 30 and we'll go till around you know something like that um I've, it really made me recognize my privilege and the way and how lucky i am to have been able to afford full-time daycare and to have access to that so um you know my partner nathan and i um we both work full-time he's a he's a high school teacher and i'm obviously a professor um and so we are able to afford to send aspen to a lovely home so i'm very aware that other people don't have that option um because of monetary issues and whatnot and so you know i want to sort of hedge all of my answers with with a, the acknowledgement that i am privileged um but that said it's been really hard even for um it's been it's been it's been hard for us. Um, so I'm saying us because I'm lucky. Uh, my my partner Nathan and I share all child rearing responsibilities, so we have a very egalitarian marriage um, and parenting um, relationship. And so that's been really nice um, in that you know we have to plan our schedule. One person can be with Aspen because you can't really like set him in front of a screen or even give him a task to do, right? You have to play with him. Um, so one person's with Aspen full time um, and, and then we switch back and forth um, with him so that he, um, so that he has someone with him that he's stimulated. Um, so it's been, it's been really hard because, you know, it's like doing two full time jobs time. But for me, it's really like throwing into relief the fact that I'm privileged because I have health care, that I'm privileged because I have a partner who is super supportive and a wonderful father. I'm privileged because I have had access to daycare, so I realize what I'm missing. So I think we really need to acknowledge privilege. We need to sort of start questioning systems that are broken. Then I think that that's really coming into light um, <laughs> as, as we navigate as a nation um, through, through this crisis. From Beacon Web News, I'm May Craig. Many events in the arts and entertainment industry have either been canceled or have had to be rescheduled. Robert Weary fills us in on some events and what they're doing due to the pandemic on this week's edition of Weary Weekly Entertainment News. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of Weary Weekly Entertainment News. The entertainment world has completely changed since the coronavirus became a pandemic. Many arts and entertainment institutions are changing their summer schedules. For instance, Tanglewood and Lennox has canceled the Boston Symphony Orchestra's Boston Pop Season and the Tanglewood Learning Institute. 
This would have been the 25th anniversary of conductor Keith Lockhart's time with the orchestra. A popular summer season is still in jeopardy as well, with the decision likely coming in May. This marks the first time that the Boston Symphony Orchestra has canceled its season since 1890, when it failed to secure a liquor license. Williamstown Theatre Festival is taking a unique approach to their season. It is canceling all physical shows, but it is teaming up with Audible Books to produce its entire 2020 season. Productions of their plays will be made available for listeners online. Shows planned to be recorded include A Streetcar Named Desire with Audra McDonald, Bobby Cannavale, and Carlo Guino, and premieres of Photograph 51, Cult of Love, Wish You Were Here, and others. Release dates have yet to be announced. Visit the Williamtown Theatres Festival website for future dates and information on how to get Audible. The state of Massachusetts has canceled its annual Free Fun Friday due to concerns about COVID-19. The event, which takes place in July and August, allows visitors the chance to see museums and art institutions around the state for free for one Friday from Boston to the Berkshires. Some of the Berkshire County institutions affected include the Clark Art Institute, Hancock Shaker Village, Mass Mocha, the Berkshire Museum, and the Norman Rockwell Museum. And speaking of the Norman Rockwell Museum, which is located in southern Berkshire County, there is some positive news occurring. The National Endowment for the Humanities has awarded a $400,000 grant to the museum, which is located in Stockbridge. It will be used for the installation of Norman Rockwell, Imagining Freedoms, a national touring exhibit based on Rockwell's Four Freedom series. These four paintings will be toured throughout the country and will help the museum recover from its closing due to COVID-19 and the loss of Free Fun Friday. With all these institutions being closed, there is still an opportunity for entertainment. This week marks the last week Showtime will be available for free for Spectrum customers. There, viewers will have the opportunity to watch over 350 movies. These include The Dark Tower, Good Will Hunting, and the entire collections of Back to the Future and Scream. In addition, there are over 60 award-winning series to binge watch. Some of these are Homeland, Billions, Black Monday, Dexter, and others. Visit Showtime's website for all information. Lastly, the movies on demand market is changing. Generally, a movie that was released in theaters takes approximately three months before coming on demand. With the movie theaters closed, however, some movies are coming out a month earlier than normal. Some of the movies on demand this week include the DC movie Birds of Prey, Pixar's latest film Onward, and the Harrison Ford-led adaptation of Call of the Wild. These movies generally cost anywhere from six to seven dollars and are available for a 48-hour rental period. That ends this week's edition of Weary Weekly Entertainment News. I hope everyone watching stays healthy and safe during this very difficult time. Please make sure to like, follow, and subscribe to both Beacon Web News' YouTube page and mine. Thank you. After Larry Behan left, the school is now on a search for an interim vice president of administration and finance. Kurt Chalana will be stepping in as acting VP of administration and finance. Reporter Cara Fusco has more on this story. MCLA is in the middle of many changes, some including new staff. The administration and finance VP Lawrence Behan is no longer working for MCLA. While the school is looking for a new replacement, Kurt Chalana will be stepping in as temporary VP of administration and finance. Larry Behan, VP Behan, was at MCLA for I think over five years or so, just around there. Um, he actually took a position to be closer to family. Um, and, you know, sad to see Larry go. I think during his tenure here, he really modernized a lot of processes in terms of budget planning. He oversaw some major construction projects like uh, the Campus Center construction project and, and Fitness Center project that's going on now. So um, his presence will definitely be missed. So in the meantime, we are actually um, conducting a search for an interim chief financial officer. Um, so that's, that's ongoing. You know, I think the, the COVID pandemic may have slowed that process down just a little bit. So everyone's adjusting. And in the meantime, 
Kurt Chalana, who's our current budget manager in administration and finance, is basically acting like a communications liaison between administration and finance and President Burge and the executive team. Kurt's a, a longer term employee in administration and finance um, and has always been a part of the budgeting process when VP Behan was here. So, um, so that's why, why Kurt Chalan is acting as, as that communications liaison. And to kind of keep information flowing between all departments and divisions on campus. So that's kind of the immediate plan right now, especially as we're doing some planning for the next fiscal year. MCLA has made the decision to offer pass, no pass as an option for students this semester. I took a look at what kind of... According to CNN and US News, Many schools across the country have switched over to a pass, no pass option for the spring 2020 semester. Colleges and universities hope this decision will help to take stress off students about school during the rise of this pandemic. Everybody's doing this and part of the reason is because with this disruption for, for both students and for faculty, we, we just didn't want to, for students to be penalized because of the disruption over to over to com completely remote learning. Some faculty are very comfortable with remote learning. Many faculty are not very comfortable with remote learning. Some faculty are doing synchronous online lectures. Not all students can make those because once you get home, there are several students for whom connectivity is a problem, for whom timing is a problem, simply because you could do a Monday, Wednesday, Friday, nine o'clock class here once you get home. The world, many students' worlds are very different. They have children at home or they have other, other, um, other duties they have to do and cannot make those. We don't want them to be penalized. So a pass-fail enables a student to, to do what they can and to get, uh, essentially get by in these, in these very interesting times. Along with the decision of a pass, no pass grade, students can also decide to withdraw from a class. The deadline for both of these decisions is May 20th. So as part of an effort to make this semester as sort of seamless as possible under all of these unprecedented circumstances, part of the provision around the past no pass policy was to extend that course withdrawal deadline in the same timeline. Um, and we just want to make sure students are consulting with student financial services if they're dropping courses because it could impact federal and state financial aid if a student drops below full-time status. I think the Commonwealth Honors College um, made um, had a vote, um, but we decided to um, honor the student, uh, honor the individual college's um, decision. And um, if you know um, the college has a pass, no pass grade, um, the honors college will accept the pass grade as honors credits. So I know we have the um, minimum of uh, B in order to get honors credits, but now we're making an, an exception. So if you get a pass grade, um, you can still count that course um, toward your honors um, you know, program. MCLA recommends speaking with your advisor before making this decision, and IT is creating a form to be completed should a student decide they want the pass, no pass option. For Beacon Web News, I'm Sim Kerr. That's it for this week. To stay up to date with BWN, you can follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash MCLA BWN. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.